Hi everybody, welcome to this video on the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus Part 1. Uh, we're going to explain this theorem in this video. But we're going to start by stating the theorem. If f is a continuous function on the closed interval from a to b, then capital F of x, which we can express as the integral from a to x of f of t dt, has a derivative at every point x in the closed interval from a to b, and its value, d capital F dx, which we can express as the derivative with respect to x of the integral from a to x of f of t dt, that that's equal to f of x. We're going to explain this theorem in detail now uh, in this video. So we're going to start by looking at this plot on the right hand side of the screen. Here we've got the plot of the function y equals f of t uh, with that function uh, plotted and highlighted here in blue. On our horizontal axis uh, we've got the variable t and on our vertical axis we've got the variable y. Our function f uh, it's a function of the variable t so for a given value uh, of the variable t from the horizontal axis, our function is going to return a corresponding value uh, of the variable y from the vertical axis. We have a continuous function f uh, on a closed interval from a to b. To explain that term continuous function, we can think of a continuous function intuitively uh, as a function which we could draw with an unbroken line of our pen on a page without ever lifting our pen from the page. When we refer to the closed interval from A to B, we're referring to all of the points between A and B as well as the point A and the point B. The definite integral from a to b of our function f of t gives the net area between the function curve and the horizontal axis. Looking here at our equation for the net area, uh, we can calculate the net area as being equal to the integral from a to b of f of t dt. So looking at our plot on the right hand side of the screen, uh, we can calculate that area uh, shaded in green between the function curve and the horizontal axis as being equal to the integral from a to b of f of t dt. And for a non-negative function like this, uh, we get the area under the curve. If we keep our lower limit of integration a fixed, uh, we can calculate the area under the curve as a function of a variable x, where x is our upper limit of integration. So we can calculate the net area as being equal to the integral from a to x of f of t dt. To help us interpret this, we can look at our plot on the right hand side of the screen. The shaded in green area there, uh, that can be calculated as the integral from a to x of f of t dt. As we change our value of x, uh, we calculate a different area under the curve. So if we were to say reduce our value of x, if we look at our plot there, we reduce our value of x to here. And if we calculated our area now as the integral from a to x of f of t dt, it would give us the area shaded in green here. And if we were to increase our value of x to here, then if we calculated the integral from a to x of f of t dt, that would give us uh, the area shaded in green uh, here on the plot. So what we have is a function. Uh, which we call capital F of X, which returns the area under the curve 
between A and X. So that net area function, uh, capital F of X, uh, that's equal to the integral from A to X of F of T dt. A capital F of X, that's a real valued function of the real variable X. So having just looked at uh, that area function, capital F of X, and what it means, uh, now we're going to look again at our fundamental theorem of calculus part one and what our theorem is saying. Our theorem is saying that if f is a continuous function on a closed interval from a to b, then that area function, capital F of x, which we can express as the integral from a to x of f of t dt, then that function has a derivative at every point x in the closed interval from A to B. So our theorem is saying that if we look at our plot here on the right hand side, that for this value of X, that our area function, capital F of X, uh, it has a derivative for this value of X. And if we change our value of X to say here, our theorem is saying that for this value of X, our area function, capital F of X, uh, it also has a derivative at this value of X. Our theorem is saying that for any point x that we could choose in that closed interval from a to b, that our area function capital F of x, uh, it has a derivative uh, for that value of x. Our theorem is also saying that the value of that derivative, d capital F dx, which we can express as d dx or the derivative with respect to x of that integral from a to x of f of t dt, our theorem is saying that the value of that derivative is equal to f of x. So if we look at our plot there on the right hand side of the screen, our theorem is saying that for this value of x, the value of our derivative of our capital F of x function is equal to f of x, shown here with this red dot uh, on the plot. And if we were to reduce our value of x to say here, our theorem is saying that for this value of x, then our area function capital F of x, it has a derivative which is equal to this value of f of x, shown here with this uh, red dot. The instantaneous rate of change of our area is equal to the value of our function f of x. In other words, the derivative of our area function, capital F of X, is equal to F of X. So that's what our fundamental theorem of calculus part one is saying. If F is a continuous function on the closed interval from A to B, then capital F of X, which we can express as the integral from a to x of f of t dt has a derivative at every point x in the closed interval from a to b. And its value d capital F dx, which we can express as the derivative of the integral from a to x of f of t dt, that that's equal to f of x. So we can talk a little bit more now uh, about the meaning of this theorem. The theorem is stated for any continuous function on a closed interval. It's saying that every continuous function has an antiderivative. An antiderivative of a function returns the function when it's differentiated. In this case, our antiderivative is capital F of x with d capital F dx being equal to f of x. The theorem is saying that every continuous function f is the derivative of some other function. In our case, f is the derivative of capital F of x, which we can express as the integral from a to x of f of t dt. 
when we find the derivative of capital F of X, we work that out as d capital F dx, which is equal to the derivative with respect to X of that integral from A to X of F of T dt. And that gives us our function F of X. The theorem is also saying that differentiation and integration are inverses of each other. Our antiderivative is the integral of our function f from a to x. Capital F of x is equal to the integral from a to x of f of t dt. When we differentiate our antiderivative capital F with respect to x, it returns the function f. d capital F dx which we can express as the derivative with respect to x of that integral from a to x, that's equal to f of x. So looking at this equation at the bottom of our screen here, the derivative with respect to x of our integral of our function f is returning our function f. The theorem is saying that differentiation and integration are connected. One differentiation is the operation for finding the instantaneous rate of change of a function and the other integration can be used to find the area under a curve. While these processes may not uh, immediately appear to be uh, directly linked, our theorem is saying that uh, they are, in actual fact, uh, connected. The theorem saying that differentiation and integration are inverses of each other. So that's our fundamental theorem of calculus, part one. If f is a continuous function on the closed interval from a to b, then capital F of x which we can express as the integral from a to x of f of t dt, has a derivative at every point x in the closed interval from a to b. And its value, d capital F dx, which we can express as the derivative with respect to x of that integral from a to x of f of t dt, that that's equal to f of x. So uh, to summarize, uh, in this video, we've explained the first part of the fundamental theorem of calculus. In our next video, uh, we're going to prove this theorem. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, I hope that you've found it useful. Uh, if you have found it useful, uh, please subscribe to this channel uh, to receive more content. Uh, thank you for your time and see you next video.